Welcome back everybody, I'm Ceramic Weasel and uh, we are still here in the Institute. I am uh, just about ready to continue on with the next quest line, um, or at least the next quest in this quest line for the Institute. Uh, I have to go talk to Father, or aka Sean, about the next thing he wants us to do. So we're just going to get right now on top of that. Now that you've had a chance to see the Institute firsthand, what do you think? Wow. Um... Should I be honest? <laughs> Return to the surface question. Uh... First things first. How do I get back to the surface? The same way you got in, of course. You are not a prisoner here. You may come and go as you please. Ultimately, all our knowledge and resources are focused on a single goal. The goal is best summarized by our model. Mankind. Redefine. <laughs> Unfortunately, no advancement comes without occasional setbacks. As remarkable as our synths are, they can be dangerous without proper supervision. The superior synth mind and body attempting to wrestle with something approaching free will can be a recipe for chaos. Okay. Proper super. Destroy them all! Uh. If the synths are intelligent and self-aware, then they have a right to free will. However closely they may approximate human behavior, they are still our creations. Right. When you see what I have to show you, I think you'll agree that we know what is best for our synths. A rogue synth has taken over the Raider Gang at Libertalia. His memories have been erased, and his identity altered. He believes he's a man named Gabriel. Under his leadership, the Raiders have taken many innocent lives. I've dispatched a courser to Libertalia. I'd like you to join him and reclaim that synth. Oh, okay. Uh, bring synth home, kill it, sarcastic. Who erased his memories? And why? Those idealistic radicals who call themselves the Railroad are behind it. We'll deal with them in time. But right now, the priority is to reclaim that synth before more harm is done. Now you should get moving. Many people are in danger, and a delay could cost lives. Okay, cool. Uh, so, what, I have to go meet the Corsa there? Is that the thing? That's, that's the plan, right? Yeah, okay. So I have to go all the way out there. Um, and I'm tired from lack of sleep, but I think... I think, um, you know, I, I can sleep here, I believe. Yes, of course I can. Um, because I did that before I, um, before I, uh, before I exited the game. Um, but, uh, yeah, so something that, uh, you may have noticed already is that not everything is as it was when I, uh, last exited the game. We've still got Sean's password in here, which I took the last time. And, uh... Uh, various other things. Uh, this is because uh, <laughs> I, I um, when I exited the game uh, after last episode, I was uh, I decided to rely on the exit save uh, to get me back in. Unfortunately, uh, the exit save doesn't always work. Apparently, uh, as I have found out, uh, so I did have to replay a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, just before uh, I started this episode, uh, because, um, because, uh, yeah, the, the exit save did not work, and I ended up back in Sanctuary. Um, but uh, this time around, I did find a bed um, to sleep to in. You, Apparently, um, you can sleep in the medical bay down in here. Here, around here somewhere, uh, but yeah, that's that's probably not where I'm going to sleep now. Um, let me think. Seeing as I have to go back to the surface, yeah, I can just can I teleport anywhere from here? I don't think I can. Uh, Lucigen, where do I want to go back to? I want to go back to Hangman's Alley, I guess. Can I fast travel? No. Don't want to place a mark. I guess I can fast travel here. Fast travel to the suck location. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's the way it works. Um, so you can only select to go to the CIT ruins from here, and you must select it from the map, I believe. Oh. Ooh. 
You can fast travel to the Institute from the Commonwealth. Planet. Oh. Hey, McCready. How did you get here? That's awfully convenient <laughs> to have you show up just as I'm exiting the Institute. Yeah, no, that's... That's, um... Yeah, I I'm just going to ignore that. I'm just going to pretend I didn't see it. Uh, so, yeah, um, I, I did have a, a little bit of an issue, uh, and I did have to replay my entry into the Institute and uh, talking to the scientists um, before I started this episode. And uh, I did sleep in the medical bay uh, to save it properly this time. And... Uh, yeah, so um, now I'm I'm tired because I only slept for one hour, and uh, I should probably go back and rest properly before heading over to Libertalia is where we're going. Man, how am I going to get over there? I'm going to have to I'm going to have to take a vertebrae, I think. But even then, I'm going to have to go all the way round. Man, that's going to be. That's going to be annoying. Um, actually, no, I think I can go across this this bridge, land bridge here. I, I believe there's a way you can walk across here. So maybe if we just travel there. Yep, all right, cool. Uh, it is settled. And I will do that after I have a good night's sleep. Because uh, we don't want to go taking on a raider gang exhausted like that. And I have to go do this with a Corsa. So that's going to be fun. Uh, working with a Corsa. Um, but yeah, um, let's see. Uh, so, so I, I guess the... Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, the, this Institute's atti attitude towards synths. So, um, it's, it's pretty clear that, uh, that they don't consider synths to be sentient and all that sort of thing. So, um, I've never lost anyone before. that's fair this enough. Uh, but, um, <laughs> oh man, Longfellow, you found, you sound terrible. Um... Man, I'm going to have to drop some things off, I think. Uh, how did I get a 10 millimeter pistol? Ugh. Ugh, I'm carrying too much. Um, okay, uh, let me... Mm, uh, uh, this is such an early point in the episode to do this, but I think I'm going to have to um, put a cut here and uh, get back to this in a moment. So uh, give me a second, guys. I'll get... Um, I'll continue the episode after this. Alrighty, I am back. Uh, I uh, did some inventory management and uh, had a good night's sleep, so now we're just going to head straight back out. So, um, what I was saying before is, uh, you know, about the uh, attitude of the Institute scientists towards synths, it seems like the general consensus is, you know, they're not sentient and, you know, it's just a, a, a mimicry thing. Um, and they're just sort of like seemingly... Uh, that way because that's the way they were programmed or whatever um and you know that's fine um th they should be the ones who actually know given they're the ones who um design the things or at least built them um but uh, it doesn't appear like there is um any uh, I, I mean i it doesn't appear like there's like an overall consensus i mean it's th th there is some discussion amongst the scientists uh, in the robotics lab about you know whether or not they're really um, genuinely sentient or not uh, so you know that's kind of up in the air I suppose um, what I found more interesting is uh, their attitude towards uh, the people on the surface it's almost as if um, they don't it's almost as if they don't think that the people on the surface are, um, are, are human anymore. It, it's, it's, it's like how, um, they have that motto, which is like, uh, what is it? Mankind redefined. It's like they're redefining, um, mankind so that it no longer... <laughs> Includes, it no longer includes humans on the surface because the humans on the surface are um, like irradiated and, and not quite human anymore, not like the classical humans uh, of like the pre-war days. So I, I guess in that way they, they're kind of like justifying their actions in... The, um, 
in the way that they kidnap and murder and and conduct their business on the surface as though like the lives up here don't actually matter anymore because uh, the future of humanity is 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 in the institute right um and if you don't consider these people on the surface to be entirely human anymore if you think of them as like basically slightly less irradiated ghouls <laughs> then you can kind of justify pretty much doing anything to them so you know that's that's pretty interesting the way um the way they view that kind of thing and i can sympathize with it to a degree but obviously uh what is no oh, combat music um yeah obviously uh, i i don't um entirely uh subscribe to that to that position uh, otherwise um i i would be uh, less critical of them but uh, yeah it's it's just an interesting uh it's an interesting way to think about it i guess um yeah so the other thing i wanted to talk about is uh, a couple of episodes i was uh, mentioning uh, a companion uh, you can get who is a synth and I'm not the courser i'm about to meet now um Oh, oh yeah, okay, that's... These are settlers. I'm bringing her in. Hang on to something. Okay. Um, yeah, so this companion you can get who is a synth. Um, and I was saying um, how uh, she... Oh, look. Um... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, no, Corsa, don't attack the Vertibird Corsa! Oh, boy. Hey, 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 hey. 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 I'm gonna make this as painful as possible. Hey, stop, no! No! Stop! Damn it! Ah! I have to run after this guy. No, no, he's he's totally not coming. I was hoping for a challenge. <sighs> Bad Corsa. Bad Corsa. Jeez. It's a good thing I didn't take the vertebrate all the way over there. I don't think I actually had the option to, but um what am I stuck on here? Yeah, look no, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not going to get caught up in in your quest. I need to talk to this course. So, um, anyway, what what I was saying is, uh, yeah, um, so I I guess um the way I sort of described it was a little bit confusing. In that, I wonder if I can talk to him. I'm now. ready to move in, sir. Good. You must be the courser I'm supposed to meet. Yes, sir. Designation X six eighty eight. I've already neutralized the perimeter guard. Just give the word, and we can start the assault on the main flotilla. Neutralize the perimeter guard? Who the hell talks like that? Apparently this guy does. Intel on the synth. Don't need help. I'm patient. What do we know about this synth, Gabriel? Designation B-592 is holed up in the shack on top of the upended cargo ship. He's probably got his best fighters with him, so we should plan on heavy resistance. So, are you ready to go in? Yeah, I I think we better. All right, let's go. Right behind you, <laughs> sir. I think we better get you out of here. Oh, McGreedy, just like that. Um, before you start shooting at more Brotherhood of Steel stuff, um, the further away from those guys I can get you, the better. Oh man. Um, yeah. So the way I was describing it, um, it, a couple of episodes probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, uh, because I was talking about how, um she's uh like new to the whole concept of being a synth and that's because um when you first meet her she's actually like an ai and um and doesn't uh doesn't get like transferred into the synth body until later on uh so it's kind of interesting to um listen to her oh what was that Pickpocket. Oh, okay. It's just him. Uh, it's kind of interesting listening to her um, talk about what it's like to be a synth uh, as opposed to, um, you know, like being a robot or whatever the hell she was before that. Um, because 
I mean, at least in a physical sense, um, she she's like constantly fascinated and interested by it because uh, it's all new to her. So uh, she's always talking about um, there are mines. Uh, she's always talking about it because it's all new, and uh, she's always going on and on about oh, you know, I'm. Uh, it's it's so fascinating to be hungry or, or uh, tired or or. Um, or, or you know, all, all, the, all the, these new emotions that I've never felt before is, is really interesting. So, you know, talking well, to her, um, you, you do get anymore. a uh, an idea of what it's like to be a synth from a physical point of view in that, you know, they do experience like a, a, a full range of what I assume to be human emotions, although I don't suspect a um, former robot would understand what is and is not a human emotion um but you know emotions are emotions are funny things i mean you know e even a even a pet a dog can once. you know experience so basic stupid, emotions so um you know that's kind of interesting and it, it does contradict what uh what that scientist in the robotics lab uh was saying about since uh, not requiring food or or um sleep or anything like that and I would be curious about, um, you know, how, if that were the case, which I don't believe it is, um, how they then are able uh, to... I'm feeling eyes on my back. Oh, wow. I ran out of ammo real quick. Um, how they would then be able to... Um, to power themselves, you know, if they didn't require any kind of food, that's just absurd. They would need some other kind of power source, right? If if that were the case, and if they were using some other kind of power source, then uh, then uh, I, I'm just gonna blow these up because I don't want um, the courser stepping on them and blowing me up along with himself. Um, and yeah, if they had like a power source within them, like uh, embedded within their body somewhere, then surely that would be trivially easy to detect and it would no longer be the case that they would be um, like these perfect infiltrators that could pass as humans. So, you know, that there, there is um, there is contradiction in the dialogue, uh, depending on who you talk to about, you know, what a synth is and what they're capable of and, and what kind of... Um, traits and features they have uh, but I'm inclined to go with uh, the the dialogue uh, uh, okay. uh, supplied by um, supplied by the synth companion that you get because uh, it, it makes the most sense to me just from like um, basic biology and the laws of physics oh my god are you pushing me you're going to be one of these guys. You're going to be one of these companions that just... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that keeps pushing me from behind. Oh, that's going to be super annoying. Maybe I... Maybe I should have left McCready behind because... Uh, oh, you're doing it again. Having two companions might be a little bit too much here. It's bad enough trying to get, uh, do one of these things with one companion in tow, but man... If both of them are going to be sort of hovering on my back and preventing me from, um, preventing me from like backing up or, or or pushing me into things, pushing me off of bridges and the like, then that's going to be really annoying. Oh, jeez. <sighs> okay. So yeah. Um. I suppose. I suppose we better. Um, sort of address what we're doing here as well. I mean, um, I, I do find it interesting that, uh, that, you know, they're using this, like the Institute is using this as a, you know, an example of why, um, it is dangerous, uh, to, uh, let synths run amok with their own sort of, um, you know, the, their own, like, autonomy and, and let them sort of, uh oh uh oh. Is it just the turret? That's the problem? Or has somebody else spotted me? Nope. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even see him. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, yeah, the, they're using an example to explain why you shouldn't let synths run amok and all that sort of stuff. And that's fine, um, because it's probably, you know, one of the best examples you can come up with, you know, obviously... If uh, since they're given free will, then they might become raiders, and then that would be terrible for everybody. But I mean, doesn't that just sort of imply that, um, you know, if you wipe a synth's memory, that they essentially do have free will because they can make uh, whatever choice they want and become whatever they want? And um, if a synth can truly become um, convinced that he's a real human being and... Uh, and uh, become like the leader of a raider gang, <laughs> and that's sort of like an argument against the whole. I, I guess the whole. Um, th these are just sort of uh, auton uh, like um, not autonomous. Um, you know what I'm trying to say? Against the idea that uh, the these uh, these synths aren't um, sentient and don't have their own autonomy. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure how to sort of uh, take this whole thing, to be honest. It's, um, but it is an interesting case study, I think. There Ooh, there is a radar over there. That's, that's a bit of a problem. I'm so exposed out here. I never liked this. I never liked this, um, this mission because, oh, there's, there's just so... Too many guys. Bring in the pain. Damn. That was just starting to have fun. Wow. <laughs> I got hit. Cause I got seen. Damn it. Damn it. It's alright. Um Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I I I don't really blame the railroad for uh for this whole mess. I, I do kinda think that um it's uh, it's totally acceptable to like come in here and either kill this guy or um, or return him to the institute because you know it's it's either that or he's gonna go carry on doing his raider thing and his raider thing is obviously not um, <sighs> it's it's not helpful to anybody. <laughs> it's. Uh, as as they were saying, you know, it's costing lives. He's going to be uh, responsible for so many deaths, etc., etc., and uh, and that's you know bad if you're uh, not if you, if you're not the kind of person who thinks raiding is good, <laughs> I guess um, you know. And uh, you know, with uh, now that we have uh, Nuka World DLC out. Um, we have to, uh, we, we have to cater to the, um, to the mindset that raiding is good, uh, just in case there's any potential raiders out there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, want to, um, to justify their, uh, their raiding habits and whatnot, so, you know. I, I'm I'm not gonna judge. I'm not gonna be judgmental. Um, if you think uh, I think being raider is uh, is the most optimal thing that you could possibly do or become in uh, this crazy post-apocalyptic world, uh, I can certainly see uh, the uh, the line of reasoning that could get you there, um, although, you know, I don't necessarily subscribe to it myself, um, I'm, I'm willing to concede that, uh, that it's not, um, entirely clear-cut, so, there's that, but, uh, yeah, from, like, uh, from the point of view of, uh, this playthrough and and what I'm trying to do with this character, which is, is like a, a Minuteman um, uh, playthrough and uh, siding with the Minuteman and, and being like a, a do-gooder, I suppose. Because I mean, unless you join the Institute, um, 
all the paths are, are kind of um, from the good guy perspective. Oh wow, I totally missed that. Thought I heard something move. Uh, here they come. I am a pretty terrible shot with this. Wow. <laughs> oh man, I am. I am running through my sniper ammunition a lot faster than I had hoped because I'm a really terrible shot with this thing. I keep missing these guys. Eh? Greedy! Somebody's shooting at you. Locate them. I can't find them with the vats. What do I do? Oh, is that them? No, there's more. No, not X686. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm just going to sort of like go along with this and, and undo what the, um, all the hard work of the railroad by uh, setting this guy up with um, new memories and a new life because you know I, I, I don't think he's um, <laughs> he's uh, doing much uh, good out here uh, but uh, I, I do understand and, and accept the point of view that you know he could have potentially become anything I mean you can't really control what a person is gonna do once they've given Nice. Once they've been given, like, um, a completely clean slate. Oh, what did I pick up? I picked up something. I should... More 10mm pistols. That's right. Present. Let's see what's inside. Jeez. Jeez. Okay. Okay. You know, this is probably a really bad time of day for doing this. Uh, I think it would have been much better, much easier at night. Unfortunately... I have to make my way through this mess of uh, wrecked boats and... Uh oh. Uh oh. Wrecked boats and things to find all the raiders. And it's more difficult than usual because I've got... We're not alone. X686 who's constantly spotting me. Oh no. Oh no. Don't tell me they've seen me as well. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm suddenly remembering really bad things about this place. Um, I remember getting blown up by a fat man launcher at some point whilst doing this in the past. Oh no. What am I gonna do? Am I going to survive this? I don't... Damn it! X686... Can I just... Can I just call you Steve? I'm going to rename you Steve. Alright, Steve. Um... It's really frustrating having Steve here because, um... He's constantly spotting me. And it's difficult to know whether or not I'm about to get spotted by a radar or whether or not it's just Steve. And, yeah, I wonder if I can tell him to wait somewhere. Can I, can I talk to Steve? Oh, I've just got pickpocket options now. Um, lantern, that thing, ammo. I suppose I could, um, oh no, I can't even sleep here. Hmm. I'll have to find another mattress or something. Um, Steve. <coughs> Following your lead. Ammo levels are good, sir. No, I can't. I can't tell him to um to stay. So that's a bit frustrating. Uh, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Detected, detected, constantly detected. <sighs> Let's see if I can find. What is with all these mattresses? They've all got stuff on them. It's 
somebody just take a swim? <laughs> I think that's Steve. Damn it, Steve, get out of the water. Stop acting like an idiot. go anywhere with this guy. This Steve guy is... Oh. Okay. You think that's the last of them? <laughs> I mean, the ones out here anyway, obviously there's, um... There's that to deal with, but... Oh, does this continue all the way over there as well? Combat sturdy armor. Why can't I use any of these mattresses? <sighs> eh. Uh oh. Please don't run. No, 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 no. Ex Steve! Don't do it, Steve! Oh god. Steve is gonna go on a rampage. Crap. Run! Just drop, will you? I've got things to do. Oh jeez. How does how does this how does this go down? Wow. <laughs> Steve, you okay? You call this a Um, is Steve trying to kill me now because I accidentally shot him? Is this a thing? Is, is he going to turn around and kill me? I accidentally shot Steve. <laughs> what do I do? No, he, he's, he's not trying to kill me. Okay, that's good. Whew, that was close. So who is trying to kill me? Sloppy tactics, bad aim. This won't take long. Who's got sloppy tactics? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow. Yep. I'm already for Yep. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> what is... Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, okay. See... Steve is getting into, um... A little bit of a scuffle with the Brotherhood of Steel here. And uh, I don't like their chances to be honest because um I I don't think Steve is killable. I think he's um he's immortal, so <laughs> Oh jeez. I'm just gonna let them fight it out. Obviously, um obviously the Brotherhood of Steel don't stand the chance. 